U.S. President Joe Biden has spoken out against Israeli Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and his policies on Gaza. In an interview with an American Spanish language broadcaster, Biden said Netanyahu should call a ceasefire immediately. Patty Cohen has more from Washington. Now, this could be a very interesting comment from U.S. President Joe Biden. He was doing an interview with Univision trying to shore up some of his support with Latino voters where he has been lagging in his reelection campaign. So there was mostly domestic questions, but there was one question on the war in Gaza. The reporter asked if the president believed that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was more concerned with political survival than the interests of Israel. Now, important perspective, this happened f shortly after there was that attack that we know Biden was outraged by on the World Central Kitchen staff. But so put that in context, the question was asked, the president we know was very angry in that moment, but here's what he had to say. So I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous that those four, th three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore, it wasn't like there was a convoy moving here, et cetera. So I, what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to just call for a ceasefire, allow for the next six, eight weeks total access to all food and medicine going into the country. I've spoken with everyone from the Saudis to the Jordanians to the Egyptians, they're prepared to move in. They're prepared to move this food in. And I think there's, there, there, there's no excuse to not provide for the medical and the, and, the, and, the, and the food needs of those people. They should be done now. What could be important here is that U.S. President Biden has always said that there should be a ceasefire in exchange for trading of the captives. Now, did he just misspeak as he sometimes does and then his staff comes out and says, well, he didn't mean that, it's not a change of policy. We'll know more on Wednesday because we expect to hear from President Biden himself in a, a press conference. Uh, so we'll see if this is a change of policy, but he's definitely sending the message that he is angry with the way Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been conducting this war on Gaza. Patty Colhane, Al Jazeera, Washington. Now to discuss this and all the latest developments in Israel's war on Gaza is Mohammed Al-Masri, who's a professor at the Doha Institute for Graduate Studies, joining us on the News Hour. Thank you, Mohammed, for being with us. What, what do you make of this new criticism leveled at uh, Netanyahu by Biden? Do you expect any concrete changes in U.S. policy as a result of this growing anger, it would seem, from the White House? Yeah, so I sat here just a couple of days ago and I talked about how I was less pessimistic. I didn't say I was optimistic, but I said I was less pessimistic uh, because it looked like the U.S. was on the verge of changing course, uh, perhaps meaningfully, uh, in this uh, conflict and with regards to the negotiations. The U.S. is going to be the U.S. They are staunch allies of, of Israel, but the U.S. will change course if they are pressured to. And I thought that the pressure was building up on Biden because of the upcoming elections, because of the attack on the aid workers, mm -hmm. because of the reports coming from Israeli media that Israel is targeting civilians at this uh, 100 to 1 uh, ratio, um, that they're uh, implementing the, the Dahiya doctrine. All of these things are very embarrassing to the U.S. Mm -hmm. However, over the past 48 hours, what we've heard is more rhetoric from the U.S., from Anthony Blinken, from Joe Biden, that seems to me, in my reading, to be uh, supportive of, of Israel and the Israeli narrative. And most notable in that is that the U.S. continues to advocate for the Israeli position in these ceasefire negotiations. They're not working or operating as a neutral arbiter. They're advocating explicitly for the Israeli position, which is for a temporary ceasefire. Yeah, interesting also to hear the U.K. say, uh, David Cameron say, that he'll continue arms sales to to uh, Israel, despite the growing pressure within the UK for, for the country to hold arms sales to, to Israel in the wake right. of the killing of the aid workers. What do you think has changed in, in these last few days? It's more of the same. It's mm -hmm. more of the same. I think that uh, we're hearing some, some empty rhetoric, some criticisms of Israel, but we've heard this throughout. I mean, two months ago, people made a big deal because Joe Biden said that Israel was bombing indiscriminately, mm -hmm. when indiscriminate bombing is a war crime. But what did it mean on the ground? It meant nothing. So, so far, we haven't seen any tangible change mm -hmm. on the ground, not with respect to the weapons, not with respect to the, the negotiations or anything else. But do, to what extent do you think the U.S. is willing or able to use its leverage? 
it's definitely able to use its leverage. The U.S. has, from day one, uh, had the, the power and the leverage to end this entire war, but it doesn't want to. It wants... Um, it's basically aligned with Israel that it wants Israel to continue uh, uh, and fulfill all of its objectives, which include, according to Israel, uh, eliminating Hamas completely, which is, we're talking about tens of thousands of, of members. Um, and if that's the case, then we're talking about a war that will go on for many, many more months. And it no longer looks like Netanyahu's declaration in December that this would go on for all of 2024 at least. It no longer looks like that's absurd. Yeah. There, there was some hope there'd be a ceasefire over the Eid holiday, which hasn't materialized. We've seen more Israeli airstrikes uh, last night uh, on Gaza. But there are reports, we've heard at least, reports of some progress in Egypt that could perhaps lead to a ceasefire. Are you optimistic at all that we could see some movement come out of Egypt in the coming days? I'm, I'm not particularly optimistic. I wish I could say otherwise, but I'm not particularly optimistic, mostly because the gap between what Israel wants and what Hamas wants remains huge. Israel wants, and the United States wants, for this war to continue. So what they're asking, and I look at this through the lens of rational choice theory, political actors make rational decisions based on calculations of self-interest. I'm not sure why Hamas would agree to a temporary truce only to allow Israel to continue what hundreds and hundreds of experts have de decidedly decreed is a genocidal war. You're asking Hamas to sign up for the continuation of a genocide. It doesn't really make sense from their perspective to sign up for that. And um, that's the reason why I don't think that mm. anything's going to get done, at least not right now. What about the Israeli invasion of Rafah? Does that seem inevitable to you now? It's looking more and more like it is. Uh, two, two days ago or three days ago, I sat here and said it, it might not happen because the U.S. is feeling all this, this pressure. But now, with the rhetoric, it looks like it's, it, it's going to happen. The U.S. doesn't look at all prepared to use its leverage mm -hmm. uh, with Israel. And the disagreement is not about the invasion to Rafah. If you listen closely, they're just talking about the, t the timing and the specific approach to the invasion of Rafah. But the, but the United States doesn't disagree with Israel about the need to invade Rafah or the need to uh, eliminate Hamas. Mohamed al-Masri, very good to get your thoughts on this, as always. Thank you very much for joining us. Mohamed al-Masri is from the Doha Institute of Graduate Studies here in Qatar. Thank Thanks. you. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.